Hello, um, welcome to my talk. I'm going to be talking about writing Go analyses. Uh, so, I'm Michael Matloub. I work on the Go team, uh, focused on tools. Uh, and I maintain the Go analysis package. Uh, what is the Go analysis package? Um, so, it's a nice way uh, to package and write analyses. Uh, like, like static analyses that examine code and, and find errors and stuff, uh, kind of like the ones that Natalie mentioned in her talk uh, before. Um, and, and it provides a nice way to run them in different sorts of environments, so it's like super convenient. Um, so so let's, let's provide some more uh, additional motivation for, for why uh, to use analyses. Uh, so in this talk, I'm going to be focusing on preventing yourself uh, for making mistakes when you're writing code. Uh, so, so let's take a look at a concrete example of this. So I, I love this package. Uh, it's called uh, uh, the Comp package, and it's developed by uh, another colleague of mine um, on the Go team. And it compares two values for equality, so you don't have to write your own equals method on it, and it's like a better thing to use instead of reflect deep equal in your tests. So I use it all the time. It's great. Um, and because uh, Go doesn't have generics, uh, it has to take two empty interface values. Uh, but, but they're supposed to be the same type. OK. So now let's take a look at some code that, that's using this package. First, um, here's, a, here's some like pretty standard uh, uh, stuff. Um, I have. Um, I have a, uh, I have a struct uh, x, and um, and uh, it has a uh, as a string method. It's like pretty. <laughs> Doesn't this make the talk more fun? I it's like off. Oh shit! I. How do I even use a computer? Okay. Oh, awesome. Okay, so so um, it's pretty standard. I have a struct has nothing in it. All of the x's are the same, just to make this super easy. Okay, uh, I have a string method on it. It's just gonna say instance of x, like pretty simple, pretty dumb. Uh, and then I have a new function, which is like pretty standard, returns. A new uh, pointer to pointer to a new x. Um, okay, now I have my test method. So this test method um, has a want and a got, and it compares them if they're equal, uh, and if they're not, um, it presents an error message. So this looks fine, right? <laughs> so so uh, we get an error message. Uh, they're not equal to each other. Worse than that, uh, look, the got and the want values are the same. So uh, this, uh, this kind of sucks. Um, so, so what's the problem here? The problem is, the problem is that got was a pointer to x. Um, it was returned by the new function. But want, I just like defined it to be x open close brace, which is not a pointer, and because they're not the same exact type, um, comp equals returns false. Um, arguments to comp equal always have to have the same type, uh, including whether it's a pointer to a value like, or, or not. It's just, it has to be exactly the same. Um, so this kind of sucks. What do we do? Uh, we've written this code. Uh, we ran our test. And, and we saw that, that the error message was impossible to figure out. Like, what do we do? Well, I have a suggestion. We can write another program that checks our program uh, and tells us if there's something wrong with it. Uh, so, so I'm going to amaze you with a demo right now. So I already, 
I already wrote a program. It's called Check. It's pretty cool. And I'm going to run it in the, the current directory. First up, let me, show you what's, let me show you what's inside the current directory. Uh, OK, standard modular package. Um, this is like exactly the thing that we saw before. Uh, okay, the, the demo is, 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 is like done now. Oh, done now. Okay. Yeah, okay, watch, this is it. Are you ready? <laughs> Whoa! Okay, just think about how much time I saved not debugging this. I'm, oh, I'm so happy. Um, so, so, so this is amazing. Um, and, and this is an analyzer. And analyzers are, are amazing. Um, so again, so an analyzer looks at your program and it provides diagnostics. And the diagnostics can be warnings, errors, or just suggestions, like your code is broken, or like maybe if you write it this way, it'll be more clear, or whatever. Um, and today, uh, I think like what I want to focus on is that they're, they're helpful for spotting errors that humans can miss. It's so easy uh, to write code that has like subtly wrong errors that you can spend forever looking at and never figuring it out. But computers, they'll always get it right. So we should rely on the com computer to help us with this. OK, I'm going to give you two examples of analyzers in the wild. Um, and this is actually in addition to the analyzers you saw in the previous talk. Um, so GoVet, GoVet is great. It comes for free with Go. Um, you can run it on your code. It'll find uh, errors in your code and report it. And we actually uh, recently rewrote it to use analysis framework. So now you also have a bunch of uh, examples of how to use analysis framework. So it's pretty cool. Um, static check uh, is uh, a tool written by the community that's currently being converted to use Go analysis. It has a ton of analyses. Um, and uh, it'll flag things that are, are probably errors in your code that you can look at and, and try to fix. So, so this is also great. Um, OK, so, so let's get back to our example. And let's look at the code. Um, so every analyzer starts with an analyzer. So this is, um, this is a configuration for our analyzer. And um, it has a name. We're going to call it comp equal, because it checks comp equal. Uh, we're going to give it some uh, documentation, check the arg types of comp equal, does what it says. Um, OK, now here's a requires field. So analyzers are allowed to depend on other analyzers. Uh, so we're going to be depending on the inspect analyzer. I'll talk about this uh, on a later slide, but just we're depending on another analyzer. And finally, there's a run function. This does the work of the analyzer. It takes syntax and types and produces diagnostics. OK, so, so I just said syntax and type. What are syntax and types? So, so let me just give you a quick overview. So here's an example. Um, so comp equals got want is, is some code. Um, and this is just text. And uh, to manipulate it more easily, we turn it into a data structure, uh, which we call the syntax or the abstract syntax tree. And so each, um, each of these like, bubbles corresponds to like, some value in Go. So the function call is a struct that corresponds to the whole thing, comp.equals got want. Right? And it has like, two fields. One of them is the function itself, which is comp equals. The other is the arguments. And the argument has two things, has two identifiers, which are got and want. And those are the arguments to, to come equal. So it's really easy to look at this structure and, and find what we want without having to parse the code ourselves, because that's really annoying. OK, so what about the types? So the types are, are like annotations on, to on top of the syntax. So it says, what we know about the types of various expressions in the syntax. 
we know the result of comp equals got want is always going to be a Boolean. And we know comp equals is a function. And most crucially, we know that got is a pointer to x and want is an x. And this is exactly what we need to do our check. What we need to do is look at these arguments, see if they have different types, and if they do have different types, we report it to the user and we give them an error message. So, so let's take a look at the code for that run function. Um, so run uh, takes a pass. A pass is our, our best friend when writing an analysis. It has everything we need. It has a syntax. It has the types. Uh, and it also has a method um, for reporting um, the results to the user, to the framework, and a bunch of other stuff that, that we won't uh, touch on today. And uh, analyses can return values. So uh, you saw that on the previous analysis, um, on the previous slide, we depended on the result of the inspect analysis. This analysis does not return any values, so we're just going to return nil. Now, because we depend on the inspect analysis, it would be useless if we didn't actually get it. So we're just going to fetch it out of this results map that we have. And then we're going to call this preorder method. So this is the core of what inspect helps us do. Inspect prepares a summary of the graph of the, the tree that we're looking at. And it allows us to call a function on everything in the tree and to filter on only the nodes that we care about. So AST call expert is a struct that corresponds to anything that looks like a function call. And we care about function calls to comp equals. So we're just going to filter to those and ignore everything else. And then we're going to call an inspect node function on that that does the work of looking at the node, seeing if it's what we care about, and if so, reporting the diagnostic to the user. And here is the code for inspect node. Because we filtered for function calls, for call experts, we can immediately do a type assertion. And then we use this type util callee utility function. So this is a little bit uh, in the weeds, but basically we're getting from the syntax to the types for the call, and we're fetching the actual call outside of, of that structure. And for sometimes there's no call, we'll just, this is like a small detail, don't worry about it. We're just going to return if that happens, and, and we don't care about anything that's not a call. Next step, we only care about calls to come equal. So we're going to check the name of the function. This is a fully qualified name, including the package path, and see if it's comp equal. And if it's not, then uh, we don't care about it. So we'll return. Finally, we'll grab the arguments. We'll use types info, which maps from syntax to types, which is on the pass, our best friend to map to the types of each of the two arguments to the function. And then we'll check to see if they're the same. And if they're not the same, we'll tell the user that there is something wrong. We give it a pause, which is the location of the code that's wrong, so it can display to the user where the mistake is, and a message. Um, so for some of you who are a little eagle-eyed, uh, there are some cases where this over-reports, but I'm just going to skip that. OK, we wrote an analysis. Awesome. How did we do it? Let's do a quick recap. First step, we filter the nodes that we care about. We only care about function calls, so we're going to filter call experts. Next, we examine the syntax and type info to meet a condition. What's the condition? We want calls to comp equal where the arguments have different types. And if the code meets that condition, we report a diagnostic, tell the user what's wrong. So now I've written an analyzer 
what do I do with it? I just have like this analyzer value in my code. How do I actually run it? It's this simple. So this is the code to the check program that I ran in that amazing demo earlier. Let's look at the two parts of it. One, single checker dot main. This is something else that's distributed with analysis framework. It runs a main function that does all the work of checking various arguments uh, and flags and such, and then running it on the code that you pass to it. And then we just give it the analyzer that we wrote. That's it. So in these like handful of lines, we have a full program that can analyze our code. It's amazing. Uh, the next thing you could do is if you have written an analyzer that is high confidence and generally applicable to all Go code, you can contribute it to VET. We would love to have more analyses that we can run on all Go code to find and prevent bugs. And finally, you can contribute to Go Please. That's how you pronounce that thing. So Go Please is this language server which talks with your editor. So your editor talks to the service that's running on your computer to do auto-completion and references and all that stuff and analyses. And it runs a set of analyses. Currently, it's a set of analyses in, in VET, but we're planning on adding more. And if you have analysis that is generally applicable and om almost always correct, then we can put it into Go Please and show it in everyone's editors really easily. This is real code from Go Please uh, that I've uh, kind of taken a snippet of. And it just have a, has a list of analyzers. And all we need to do is stick our analyzer in that slice. And it'll just run the analyzer and display the results in the editor. So currently, you have to modify GoPlease itself, but we are working on a way that you can plug in other sets of analyzers into GoPlease that you can run without recompiling it. So I like to think that I've given you a new power, the power to stop and prevent bugs. So I hope you use this power to stop and prevent bugs. Thanks for coming to the talk. Uh, the code um, for the, the check program is on that, that GitHub repo. Okay. Okay, I'll take, I'll take this question uh, by anonymous. Is the problem with comp earlier more of a type problem that ideally the compiler should catch? So, so we're, we're getting into like pretty dangerous territory here, right? If you believe that Go should have generics, uh, then yes, like the compiler could catch that. But currently, like there's no way uh, to check that because the compiler doesn't know the actual, um, the co the compi you can't write comp equals in a way so that the compiler knows the types of it. Only you can, we're writing a program that expresses the invariance of comp equals, but there's no way to communicate that to the compiler directly, if, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, uh, so, yeah, sorry. Uh, and I guess that's it. Thank you.